Hey y'all, it's Miss Coburn, back with another read aloud. Today's book is called The Music in George's Head, and it's the story of how George Gershwin wrote Rhapsody in Blue. And this book is by Suzanne Slade, illustrated by Stacy Innerst. George heard music all the time, at home, at school, even when he was roller skating down New New York's busy streets. Sometimes he was so busy listening to the beautiful music in his head, he didn't pay attention to other things, like getting to school on time. Now, George wasn't a troublemaker. He just couldn't stop thinking about Melody in F, a classical tune he'd heard at the Penny Arcade. No one knew George was interested in music until his mother decided the family needed a piano. George's older brother, Ira, took one look at the second-hand instrument and headed to his room. But George ran to the piano, spun the stool down, and lifted the keyboard cover. When he felt those smooth keys beneath his fingers, his face lit up like the lights on Broadway. Without a word, he pounded out a popular ragtime tune. His mother was amazed. She had no idea he'd been practicing on a friend's player piano. George began studying with some of the best piano teachers in town. At night, he sneaked into concerts to hear famous pianists play. He pasted pictures of his favorite composers, Liszt, Ornstein, and Busconi, into his music scrapbook. When he was 15, George started working at Remix Music Store. He played sheet music that customers asked to hear. George also wrote his own tunes, lively, fun, and different. At 17, he sold his first one. Three years later, on a bumpy bus ride, George heard new melodies among the clatter and noise of New York's bustling streets. Toes tapping, he plucked out notes for a tune called Swanee. The loud music annoyed his father, but George kept on playing. He just couldn't quit thinking about those city noises. Millions of people bought records of Swanee. Soon, George was invited to every party in town where he played Biddly Bop Blues tunes all night long. By 1920, everyone knew George Gershwin, the young hit songwriter. People wondered what kind of music the bold, creative composer would write next, but George already knew. Jazz. As a boy, he roller skated to New York's Harlem neighborhood to hear the smooth, syncopated jazz rhythms in clubs and restaurants. Most serious musicians thought jazz wasn't music at all. The notes were restless, untamed. The rhythms were wild and unpredictable. Band leader Paul Whiteman loved George's wild, restless music. Determined to prove hit musicians like George were playing important music, Whiteman planned a concert, an experiment in modern music. He was sure people would go crazy for this new jazzy razzmatazz. George set out to compose a dazzling, daring piece for the concert, one that showed jazz was exciting, limitless, free. He scratched his head and paced the floors, and scratched and paced some more, He'd barely written a single note when he had to leave town for the opening of his new musical, Sweet Little Devil. The train's steely wheels creaked into motion. Rattlety bang. Its huge wheels rolled faster and faster. Rattlety bang, rattlety bang. Faster still, the heavy wheels seemed to fly over the metal track. Rattlety bang, rattlety bang, rattlety bang. And that's when George heard it. Music. Notes, rhythms, slow and steady, fast and furious. The train noises created new melodies in his head. He thought about the old, familiar music he loved. Classical, ragtime, jazz, and the blues. The different styles of music blended together into one beautiful rhapsody. George heard his concerto. He even saw the notes on paper. Back home, George finished his concerto. It was just as he'd planned. 
daring and razzmatazz dazzling. It was a musical kaleidoscope of America's melting pot, Rhapsody in Blue. With the concert only one week away, George and the orchestra started practicing. During rehearsal, a clarinet player decided to play a joke on George. At the beginning of the Rhapsody, his clarinet let out a long, whooping wail. All the musicians laughed, but George didn't. He told the clarinet player to wail like that in the concert. A silent, silvery snow decorated the city for the big day, February 12, 1924. Hurried feet pounded staccato beats as people rushed inside Aeolian Hall. Every seat was filled. The lights dimmed. The first of the 26 musical numbers began. Backstage, George listened and waited. He was scheduled to perform next to last. As the band blew, plucked, and strummed, the packed hall grew hot and stuffy. Eyelids began to close. People squirmed in their seats. Some stood up to leave. Then George sat down at the piano. A clarinet fluttered softly like butterfly wings on a morning breeze. George smiled at the clarinet player. The clarinet wailed as it slid up 18 notes. Sleepy eyes flew open. Restless listeners sat still. People heading for the door hurried back to their seats. Trombones and trumpets blew brassy sounds, small and soft, then big and bright. Velvety violins started to sing. More musicians joined in, each carefully playing their sheets of music. Fingers flying, George made those piano keys march, skip, dance. But he didn't have sheet music. George played the notes in his head. The room was electrified, energized. People were surprised to hear new melodies mixed with classical, ragtime, jazz, and the blues. George's Rhapsody in Blue was smooth and sultry, brash and bouncy. It turned into an up-tempo march melody. No one had ever heard anything like it, except George. He'd been hearing beautiful music all his life. And that is the end of our book. Did you hear how George used all the different genres of music that he had learned in his life? He used classical, ragtime, jazz, and the blues. And did you notice how the whole book, all the illustrations were done in the color blue? Everything in the book was blue, just like his song. I hope you enjoyed today's story. I still love and miss you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Stay healthy.